All right, my friends, we have another friend of Electric Playground and Reviews on the Run that has uh, come in to join us on very short notice, and I'm very, very excited to say that Jeff Kanata is here from uh, his own podcast, uh, DLC, and We Have Concerns, and he's also working with Slash Film, a fantastic movie website, and on their podcast, the Slash Filmcast. Uh, this is a passionate gamer who I've known for many years and obviously was uh, a part of our Reviews on the Run family for a long time. And I just happen to, I love this dude. He's an awesome dude. And thank you so much for uh, coming back on, on EP today to talk about God of War, Oh, buddy. man. My pleasure. Uh, it's great, great to see you. And the feeling is mutual. I'm a... Uh... I'm excited. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I, I know that you just uh, have been under embargo and you've been playing God of War and uh, been loving it. I, one of the comments that uh, that I saw that came out of your Twitter feed was uh, uh, a sort of a connection to some of uh, our gaming favorites out there. Why don't you elaborate on that, your observation there? Yeah, uh, I, I guess the tweet kind of blew up. Uh, I have I have gotten an insane amount of uh, response to it. A little, a little frightening. A lot of hate, actually. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I I basically compared uh, God of War to a lot of my favorite games. I think people may have t taken some people may have taken that as as a negative. But I was saying, you know, what if Zelda had a cinematic story? What if uh, what if uh, Uncharted put its violence into a context? What if Last of Us had a deep uh, skill-based action combat system. Uh, what if um, uh, what if Dark Souls was a little more accessible? Yeah. All of that stuff is how I feel God of War does. It it, it really uh, it really plucks from I think the best of the best yes. and creates a really cohesive experience around that. It. It's one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I, I absolutely loved it. And I'm, I'm right there with you. And I, I felt very similarly that it was a, a game built from developers that have been paying close attention to what people have been falling in love with. And the other game I would throw into that mix is The Witcher 3, which I yeah. think this... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this game really evoked in, in uh, its storytelling and its um, its commitment to fantasy. You know, that's what blew me away the most about the new God of War. Yeah, no, it's, it's an amazing... You know, you start the game. I, I won't. I won't have any spoilers. So, so there's that. But um, you start the game, and it really does feel like this very linear, uh, uncharted style game, and that's really cool. It, it does it really well. The way the camera moves in this game, everything is one shot. There are no cuts, which is absolutely, I think, an, an achievement in and of itself, absolutely, and yeah. something that you feel as you're playing it. It feels special. It feels interesting. The way the game is shot is really cinematic in a way that games haven't been. Yep. Um, but you you go along for a couple of hours playing like that, thinking that's the kind of the game you're in, and then it opens up, and yeah, it becomes like The Witcher or Zelda or these big, expansive games with lots of freedom, and yet somehow it never loses that sense that you're playing a very focused, yeah. cinematic story. And, and I... I find the mashup of those different elements to be an incredible achievement, an incredible feat that they have pulled off. And it, and it really does feel, even as it plucks from these other things, it feels like something fresh and new. It's also a testament to the editing expertise at Sony Santa Monica because they built something epic and huge, but they knew when to reel it in as well. And they make it... I said in my review, it's a small game as well. You know, it's not a, mm. it's not just a massive game with oversized fights. There's a, right. a minimalism about it that's really wonderful because the the encounters that you have matter. They mean something. Yeah, every fight in the game is like uh, sweaty palm, thrilling yeah. and fun. Yeah, and feels it, even there are some fights where you're just mowing through dozens and dozens of guys. Uh, and even those fights feel engaging and you're it, it not by rote. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of the God of War games of the past, as fun as they have been, do feel like you're just mowing through yes. enemies. Mm -hmm. And this game makes in, in, and that's kind of where the Dark Souls comparison for me came to was it, it all of the fights feel strategic, feel skill based, feel engaging, white knuckle. And it, I mean, it's really something. It's really amazing. Have you been able to go back now and play it after you've beat the story and, and sort of feel what the game feels like afterward? No, I haven't really experienced uh, the story post. I, I mean, I finished the game last night. Yeah. So uh, it, I, I haven't played it. It is much something, Jeff. That. 
That's what I'm in right yeah. now. It is something. There's a whole well, discussion have... about post, like we, we were just talking about on the show, uh, the Destiny 2 kerfuffle and the, the sort of dissatisfaction of the community with the, sort of their end game strategy. But with God of War, yeah. it also feels like there is an end game strategy and it feels very different because you know a lot more about, you know, the weight of the world. It's, it's pretty yeah. cool. It's awesome that the amount of optional stuff that's in that world, um, without spoiling anything, it is yeah. the things you get to do are incredible. The secrets behind every, I mean, it really does feel like it has a lot of Zelda DNA in it. Totally. Um, puzzles that are interesting and clever. And, and I'm, you, you mentioned their editing and I think that that is, uh, not just editing in a cinematic sense, no. but in a, in a, you know, the things that they take away yeah. are really smart. Like for example, there isn't a complete freedom of climbing anywhere. You do get a prompt on your circle button on specific things, but I found, found that to be so wonderful. I found that to be so uh, precise yeah. and it made, it made that big world feel uh, much more accessible actually because I didn't feel like I had to waste my time on stuff. There's a lot to do, but I'm always doing something productive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, for, it takes a little while to get used to it and there are invisible walls that you come up to. Um, and I had an issue with right. that with Uncharted Lost Legacy because, you know, you come off of Zelda or you come off of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn where there is just this right. limitless exploration available to you and it does feel a little bit like you're funneled. And God of War has that at the beginning of the game. It feels like, oh, I can't go there, I can't go there. But then you're right, it does open up and you also see the, the wisdom in the choices that were made. You can tell yeah. that a tremendous amount of effort was in there. And I, I had another thing. I, I equated a lot of the, um, the storytelling to stuff that I saw in Logan. And it also reminded mm. me a lot of um, Batman's relationship with Robin in some ways. Um, yeah. But there was another thing that I thought about with this, this game. And I, I don't know if you think this will be weird or not, but I, I saw the first Hobbit in 48 frames and it was mm -hmm. strange, but it was also kind of awesome to see those special effects rendered at this super high frame rate because it made it yeah. look like these... It, it looked like these crazy, fantastical magic effects were happening in reality. And hmm. that kind of felt like that with this game as well, because there are so many photoreal moments. And then yeah. it goes into this high level of fantasy, and it just like your eyes can't believe what they're seeing. Yeah, I mean, the, the way the camera is handled feels like it's a physical object. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel like a virtual thing. And, and I think that is really smart and really hard to pull off. Mm -hmm. Like it's not an easy thing to do that, to make the camera move like it, it, like there's a person holding a camera running behind Kratos or whatever, yeah. uh, in these cutscenes. And, and it's, it's spectacular. It really sells the reality of that world. And I mean, just visually it, it is spectacular. There are so many different looks for the game. Everything, the way everything's big in, in, in the frame and, and the, the way the world feels chunky and weight. I mean, just the way he like reaches out his arm and catches his ax when you recall it to it, you know, it clamps into his hand. It's like it, everything feels good, man. It all feels great. His abs look like they're made out of stone. <laughs> right. Well, you know, he's got a war. What are you going to do? It's, gonna... Yeah. And there's lots of really cool, just like honest, quiet acting moments. What did you yeah. think of um, uh, Christopher Judge as Kratos? Unbelievable. Right? Yes. Man. It's unbelievable. Yes. He, the, and the performance, I, the... I'm, I'm sad that I don't have the name at the top of my head, but the uh, actor who plays the young boy, Atreus, is excellent. Uh, equally, yeah. equally excellent. Yeah. In fact, the whole cast is. And another thing that's wonderful about this game is. There aren't – in a game that is a giant open-world role-playing game, yeah. action role-playing yeah. game for, for all intents and purposes, it has like six characters. But all of them are really well fleshed out. You know a lot about them. They have – they're beautifully performed. It, it, it feels like this uh, – a film or a TV show where you really know all of the characters and there's a lot of time spent with all of them. Do you think, it's great. Do you think this is the best game you can play on the PlayStation 4 right now? I mean, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a little given to hyperbole, but I, I think this is as it's making a play for my favorite game ever. Yeah. It is that good. That's it is awesome. really, I, I mean, I think that when I break it down, like I think it has, it's the best looking game I've ever played. Yeah. It has 
one of the best combat systems I've ever played. It has exploration, puzzle solving, storytelling, one of the best stories ever in a game. All of the things that it does, all if you break out each piece of it, they're all in the top tier of any game that does what that does. Right. And you put them all together and it works with such synergy. The progression, I love how the progression works. Mm -hmm. And it's very unique to that, to the, how it, how they do that, where you you have uh, experience as a currency, really, and the way you uh, acquire items and loot, and then level those things up, like the way skills work. The every piece, if you break it off and just think about that one piece, is great. And then you put them all together, and it all works together well too. It really feels to me like, if not the best video game of all time, in the conversation. In the conversation, absolutely. And it does feel like um, there was a, a real effort to make this accessible, even though it's an M-rated game and it's incredibly violent. And I had to, you know, tell my daughter, Ruby, you can't watch this. You got to go back upstairs. You, Daddy's yeah. killing characters now. You can't watch this. Uh, um, it's very available for people. You don't have to... Yeah sort of soak up the lore or give it tons of time to kind of understand what you got to do. You care about right. the characters and you get into it and you feel something for the whole experience. And, and your, I think your, it didn't occur to me, but your comparison to Logan is, is really spot on in the sense that Logan is this work that stands on its own and feels relevant and interesting and compelling and is a really cool tale. Yeah. But, if you have the extra knowledge of having seen the other X-Men films and stuff, it has layers that are deeper too, that that you get to pick up on things. Yes. And in the same way, this God of War, you have there's no need to have ever played a God of War game to enjoy this game. Yeah. But if you have, there's lots of stuff there too that adds texture and and layers to your enjoyment. Yeah, and, that, and that's also kind of uh, something that the, the Kojima Metal Gear Solid games were able to do as well, but you had to get through some impenetrable storytelling right. with lots of cross, you know, but this is a lot more refined. I did miss the God of War theme, the music. Mm, I love Bear I think the music in this game is great. Yeah, Bear but... McCreary does, does the music, it's excellent, yeah. but I did miss some, a couple of touch moments, and I... I don't want to, you know, one of the things I brought up in my review, too, is that I don't want to forget, uh, and that's why we're doing this show today, is we're running a lot of our old reviews and our old interviews. Um, classic, not old. Uh, but I, I don't <laughs> want people to uh, forget how great God of War has been, and consistently great, you know? Like, yeah. really revolutionary games every time they've come out. And uh, yeah. Uh, But, yeah, they had to kind of mature the product they had to sort of say no it's a brand new world in 2018 he's not going to have orgies he's not going to be right. you know just willy-nilly killing there's got to be yeah. a, con a consequence for this right it's i work with a uh, i work with a, a female gamer uh and uh she was asking me some questions about it and she's and one of her first questions was is there any female characters that aren't there just to be sex objects yeah and i was like yeah there really is i mean she's not a huge part of the game she's but she's a key part of the game yeah. and she's treated and i think in a, in a really respectful way and and is an interesting character beautifully performed i think that's great and you mentioned the violence yes it's a very violent game i mean multiple times i took a wolf's mouth and ripped it open <laughs> and you know whatever very violent game very bloody uh but it's also about violence yeah it, it doesn't it's not it's not just there because it's a video game. It is also commenting on violence. And I find that to be you know, one of the things I brought up in that tweet that you mentioned is sort of the problem I've always had with the Uncharted games. I love Uncharted. Me too. I love Me too. those games. Yeah. But there's this point where you have to go, oh, and then I'm going to murder 400 people. And then I'm also going to care I am because Nate Drake. Right in line one with you on that, Jeff. And I feel like yeah. that game really deserves to, to juice into the mature sort of sort of category that series and it will mean right. so much more i am right in line with you you can't just be destroying all of these characters and there not be any sort of consequence with that i totally yeah. am right there with you and and i think god of war manages to make that not dissonant yeah. right it manages to make that cart part of the core theme that it's talking about is like what do you teach to this boy what what kind of violence do you teach and and is there a line and what kind of person are you are you and are you making him into and in even in a broader sense of the culture like what 
I think the game, it really embraces that and deals with it head on. And, and it's to that game's credit. And I think, as you say, it is a very much an indication of being a more mature kind of video game. Yeah. That's wonderful. Dude, it's great to have you on this show. Uh, and I, I want to do this again, and we can catch up on uh, all kinds of stuff that you're working on, because I know you don't do sure. just the, the audio podcast. Those keep you busy, but you also have all kinds of acting work, and you've always got something really cool going on. But, yeah. Dude, you are, Thanks, man. You are uh, a, a terrific communicator and a, and a great... Uh, uh, you know, source of information and uh, passion in this business. And it's always wonderful to have you on the show. Uh, thank you. Uh, the feeling is mutual, Vic. I I'm always have a great time chatting with you. And uh, I'm so glad to see you doing what you're doing. It's it's awesome. Dude, we'll see you at E3. And, and uh, you know what? I'll have you on before then, okay? And I'll give you a little bit sure. more notice than, are you available <laughs> this afternoon? But Well, it worked out. I'm glad it worked out. Me it too. Fun. Me too. Everybody, yeah. give it up for Jeff Kanata and make sure you check out DLC. We have concerns and his work on the Slash Film uh, podcast. Take it easy, brother. Thank you. Thanks for Bye. watching. Or thanks for being here. <laughs> see you <laughs> soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.